Paul, if I can just start with your reaction to the two-game touchline ban after what went on at Norwich. I disagree with you on the two games. I think one game was sufficient enough. And uh, so I don't know who's plucked that one, but I, 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 I don't think it's right two games for, for that. Will it have a big impact on the day? No, it shouldn't. You're a footballer. You, I imagine you can do so so much. Once players cross that white line, it's up to them to go and go and perform. So um, it shouldn't affect shouldn't affect the uh, too much. Can you see the players beforehand. You see them at half time. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing you trust your staff. Yeah, they, they, um, I think that's important for me. That the lads, I know they're in, they're in good hands with the, with the lads in the the dugout area. So I don't I don't have a problem a problem with that. Be difficult sitting still for you though, won't it? We see you all action yeah. on the touchline. Yeah, no, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll probably have my moments again at, at certain times, but that's uh, I think two games for that is uh, is uh, too too much. You've never been a manager that considered sitting in the stands for the first half. Some managers do, don't they? They yeah. sit up there, see it from a different viewpoint, then go down at half time. I, I think it's everybody's prerogative how they want to how they want to do it. I, I don't like being detached from it. I like being in the the action of it, and um, yeah, but I have to take the take the hat that's that's coming. Yeah, no plans to appeal. It's done and dusted. Nah, I'm just not going to get you anywhere. It's uh, people make up their mind. As I said before, there's a lot of things that went on there that it's been bypassed. And in terms of your squad, is James Collins back? He's missed the last few games. He's training. He's, uh, he's doing. He's doing well training. But this one's a bit early. I don't know. Chambers is training. Uh, we'll see how he is uh, tomorrow. So. Um, We've still got that bug going about. Uh, one or two of the lads are still feeling a little bit of that. And we'll have to see how they are. Is that why Flynn Downs and Ellis Harrison yeah. missed out last week? No, all right? Ellis has hurt his hamstring at the minute. He's doing okay, not not bad. Uh, Flynn definitely had it uh, during the Derby game, and then all of a sudden it, it kicked in after that, and he couldn't um, he couldn't play. But he's a lot better this week. Last week it was a rare sight. Cole Skews on the bench. Mm. He's he's not done that often in the last few years. Did he accept the decision? I'm sure he did. No, Cole. Uh, it, it was not, listen, he 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 the virus as well. He um he'd missed all all week with it and had sickness as well. Uh, there and the the lads have performed well, so there was no real need for me to kind of change uh, too much. So um, but Cole was just coming back from that. He did bug as well. So um, it was a big ask actually to put him on the bench, let alone anything else. Um, but I decided to put him on just for his his presence as well. But he he wasn't he wasn't. Still 100%. Such an onus on the young talent coming through here. Mm. We've spoken a lot the last few weeks and a few lads handed new contracts. Did De Cole and Luke Chambers, players like that, still have a part in the future of Ipswich Town, do you think? Oh, yeah, they're, they're paramount, them lads. They, they, uh, I don't think there's better role models I think anywhere they need to uh, for the way they are as, as guys, first and more, foremost. But as, as professional footballers, they conduct themselves brilliantly. They train. Really well, they're, they're at the later stages of their, of their career, and it's uh, it's no nice when you get a bit older and you have to look over your shoulder what's coming because you know something's coming, and uh, I've been there, seen it, done it. It's, uh, and the biggest decision the lads have to make, and uh, whenever they ever do stop, if they ever stop, is uh, what they do next for their own their own careers. But you can never. There's one thing you'll never beat, and one thing will never, never, or what does erode is time. You, you never beat time. Time always catches at some point. But as in lads run about the club and still playing for me, they've got massive part to play in that. They won't always play every single game because age or injury does does get you at some stage. But as role models and as as guys to look up to, then I, I wouldn't swap them for anybody. So when the time comes, do you see coaches or future <coughs> managers in those two? Uh, well, I, well, I do think. I think the. the um, I know two lads have done brilliant for the football club, whether they remain part of the club, I think it's a great idea. Whether it's uh, young coaches or ambassador roles or or whatever the case may be, I think it's, uh, I think it's important for the club to, to look at that. You deal this week for Corey and Dabba, what do you like mm. about him as a player? The, after, listen, the club lost a couple of left foot or centre halves, or, or the lad that went to Bristol City. And I thought we need we need a left footer, centre half, and then the lad Clark goes to Portsmouth as well, who's, who's doing really well. And I think well you, we can't. It's impossible there's another young one that I think's got a chance. And I think Corey's got better and better. He's trained with us, and uh, he's never let himself down. He's only a kid, 
Left foot is very, very good. And once he gets a little bit more body strength, he's going to be, he's going to be a good one. A real opportunity at centre half for like him or Luke Wolfen, yeah. isn't it? Going forward with the likes of Luke Chambers and James Collins, mid thirties, mm. Matt Pennington going back in the summer. Mm. Question marks over Jonas. There is a gap there for these boys. The club's got to have a pathway, Brennan. It's got to have. There's no point in have the young players coming through and there's no pathway there for them. They've got to have that, and I think it's great for the club that they've got as many as what they've got. It's, it's a good chunk of them there that, that that could make an impact somewhere along the line, and I think it bodes well for the future. With it. I think the as I said to you before, I don't think the, the club can keep going and, and loaning players and loaning. it's okay one or two as I say. Not not five and six, that's too too much. And then it blocks the pathway of young players. So the decision we have to make is what's the pathway for the young man? Do we have that pathway or we don't? And I would rather have some sort of pathway for them where there's there's a carrot dangling for them to, to go and get up and uh, and hopefully a few of them go and, go and grab it. At what point do you speak to the likes of Will Keane or Alan Judge about their future? Is it purely once you know what division you're going to be in, does it have to be on hold till then? Do you know, that's, that's probably the fullest thing for my mind at the minute because of the games. Uh, they two have been brilliant. I think uh, the front three that, that Crane and, and Keane and Judge are playing ever so well for us at the minute. And they're getting game time. Their game time is getting built up as well, which is great. And I think the the lads that, that you just mentioned there is, I think they're enjoying their football at the minute. I think I don't want to annoy them or or uh, see what happens. Just let them enjoy the football and let them see if they can keep on helping us the way they're doing. I guess the concern is if they play well, which you want them to, it will alert other championship clubs to their availability maybe in the summer. That's football. That's, uh, that's, that's the way the wheel turns. You have to accept that. They come here and do, do great. You know, they can't constantly. I'd rather them do great and, and lose them than and do poor and uh, things go against them. So uh, yeah, they've done. They've done. I think they've done great for us. Do you already have to start to formulate two plans for the summer? What mm. if we're in the championship, and another for what if we're in League One? Is is that the way it kind of works for you now over the next couple of months? Yeah, I think that's that's. Yeah, I don't think you can have one eye only in one. And the realism is you have, we have to look at, at both scenarios of what's what's happening. But we'll still be on this fight, there's still 13 games to go, so I'll have a lot of points to, to play for. We've got two, two big games coming up. But if we keep playing the way we have, then it's, uh, it's, and we get a bit of break at, at certain times, and we do keep performing, and uh, hopefully we can win. Yeah, two good draws against two good sides in the last mm. couple of matches, but I guess now it's time to kick on, isn't it? Yeah, well, playing well, well enough. I think the lads um, know what's at stake, they're playing well enough, they're, they're they're at it, and uh, yeah, you just hope, as I said before, just hope time doesn't go against us. I was going to say, do you think things are coming together, clicking quickly enough? The, the lads are getting better, they're, they're getting fitter as well, as I said to you before. We, when you bring in loan lads at, at that January window time, especially a lot of them, and you, you're getting them for a reason. Their, their clubs want them to have game time or those lads come back from injury. They haven't played much much football, and the, the lads, every one of them are getting fitter and getting better, and I think you can see the quality in them, that they're, they're really good players. Do you think it's going to be the lowest tally needed this season to finish fourth oh, yeah. from bottom? I think so. I think the way the league is, is I think that's definitely, yeah, that could be a main, main factor. But you must add to the hope. Well, absolutely. Listen, Wales are hope. You, you keep going. You don't you don't um, go against it. I mean, it's the same, I keep saying to you every week, the, this is a football club that it's strange because the atmosphere is unbelievable. At it. And the, the home games, I've, I've not seen anything like it. The way they're right behind you, and you're sitting bottom, and uh, so everybody believes we can do it. If we keep showing the same fight, and the same hunger, and the passion for everything, then let's let's see what happens. Wigan at home must have been a special moment for you. Your first win as Ipswich Town manager. It's a tough game. We played really well in the, the, the uh, after for about an hour. I think and then the tiredness and that kicks in is, is normal. But I think we played pretty good on that given day. And the one, the win's a win. I think that was a really for of us. Just get the win and then move on to the next one and, and, uh, and hope that can happen Saturday. I suppose one of the issues this season has been that wins haven't been backed mm. up and that makes a heck of a difference, mm. doesn't it? If you can get yeah. six points out of six at any point. Well, if we can, if we can do that in the next few weeks, then, then great. But as I said before, that we're not a team looking like as if we're clutching at things and we look disorganised and we look as if where's the next one come from. We're more than capable of winning games than we were playing. And that's, that's a great thing. I think the fans believe in it. We believe in it. We can go and win won games and uh, yeah, let's see what happens. You must see these two as a real opportunity, mustn't you? To, to pick up points. 
every game I get into, I think I can win. Or I think I can pick up points, whether it's uh, Stoke or Derby, who are two big big clubs, or whether it's Reading and, and Wigan, and no disrespect to them too, but I think I, I think anybody who's into a game thinks they can win. I don't think anybody goes in thinks they can draw or lose. I think I think the main mindset is we go and try and win. Because these teams will be scrapping as much as you mm. for points, won't they? Yeah, you have to earn the right. You have to earn the right to, to win games. As I said before, the big thing for me is we're, we're playing well. I mean, that's that's the thing that we go, we go with confidence, we go with self self belief that we can we can win. Thanks, Paul. All right. I suppose, Paul, the next two matches, <clears throat> this is where the expression relegation six pointers came mm. from. It sums it up, doesn't it? I, I guess from your perspective, defeat's unthinkable, given it would just make your what you're trying to achieve so much more difficult. Yeah, listen, winning, winning is a great habit to get. If you get winning, get momentum. It's a great, a great thing. And as I said before, we, I, playing wise, I couldn't ask any more. The way they're playing, take our chances. Then we, but we're well in the game. We've, we've got a hell of a fight amongst us at the minute. And uh, if we keep doing what we're doing, then let's see. As I said, let's see what happens. You said hopefully your satchel and Bam won't have too much of an impact mm. on these two matches. But I guess if you're handpicked two games that you really want to be on the sidelines, getting involved mm. in it, it would be two massive games in the context of the season. Yeah, but I think it's an easy option for a player to hide behind. The, the, the player, once a player's out there, it shouldn't matter who's in there in the dugout. It shouldn't matter who's who's there. Team, the, the job is to try and win for the football club. It's, it's, and the supporters that come and watch us. That's that's the main objective. Whether I'm there or not, it, it, it doesn't matter really. It's uh, if they hide behind that, then then there's a problem. You can't you can't hide behind anything. You have to do your own job and you you do it the best you can. And hopefully you get that result. It's interesting, isn't it? So you take the sport of rugby, for instance. You know, their coaches often do sit in the stands. Don't mm. they? But, I don't know if they gives them a different sort of perspective on things. But mm. a touchline ban probably wouldn't hurt a rugby coach. But in football, it's perceived to be a punishment. Yeah, I think it's a two, two totally different sports. I, I don't know too much about rugby or anything like that or the international scene. And uh, so, so I can't really comment on, on that. Football is... I guess it's individual. Some people might be comfortable up there, some people aren't. I, I don't like sitting up there. I like being in the, involved in the mix. And um, I say before, I have to take the hat, and that's that's it is. On reflection, do you wish you'd handle things differently on the day so that you wouldn't be forced to sit out the next couple of matches? The Nordic thing. Yeah. Do, I, do I wish I could handle it? No, nah, I'll do it all again. You would? Yeah, because yeah. I was right. I'll stick up for the team, I'll stick up for the club. Because I was right, and that's why. That's why I don't have any regrets on it. No chance. The manager shouldn't rise above it to set the right example, maybe. Some might, some won't. I won't. I won't take it. I won't. I tell you before, I won't let anybody belittle the club. I won't let anybody, doesn't matter who it is. I won't. I won't, I won't take. For, I won't stand for what I heard there. And I won't be. I won't stand for being manhandled by somebody who I haven't a clue who it was. I said before. I'm certainly never certainly going to take that again. Did you get any answers about that? Because obviously you were very unhappy with you know, you wrote to the FA, mm. you kind of gave your perspective. Yeah. Does anything come of that? As in, uh, what do you mean? As in, back from who? From well, because I know you were unha unhappy about you know what happened with the steward and yeah. you were being manhandled. Yeah. You made your points clear. But is that now put to bed or is that still, still ongoing? I don't, I've not heard anything. I don't. You asked me my, my opinion on it. And, uh, so as I said before, I won't, I won't stand there and let anybody try and try and do that. Is again, we we never have any like that here. I don't, I've not seen that before. Why why did I have a police escort or a police guy in the tunnel? First, that's what's mad. I have a police guy in the tunnel looking after me for six, seven years or whatever. It is. Doesn't make sense because it makes noise. Doesn't make sense. So, yeah, the answer to your question, yeah. I would do it all again, yeah. Stuart Tiger will be the man leading from the touchline for you mm. in your absence. Um, tell us a little bit about Stuart, because he, he seems to bring the same energy to the party that you do. He's jumping around just as much as you are on, on match days. Yeah, I don't, I, you know, I don't really pay attention to him. And, uh, I see him sometimes <laughs> floating around there in the... Uh, If you can, if you ask me, can he handle it? There's no problem. No, no problem. 
Gilly will be the same, there's no problem. Jimmy will be the same. Jim will be the same, there's no there's no an issue with the with the lads on that front, you know, and the the lads, the players are great guys to work with. They know the the level that we, we try and get to. They know intensity we try and get to, so it shouldn't it shouldn't it's him for it. Players will hide behind it if things go wrong. And if they think if we win and all that they might think it's a great idea you stay up in the the, the stand and things like that. So yeah, players are great for making things up, you know. What's your working relationship with, with Stuart like? Great, I, 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 listen, they're, they're close to that. And, um, and we'll have discussed things like anybody else and, and then ultimately I'll say, you know, we'll, we'll do this or do that. So, but more important, I can trust everyone. Forget everything else, I trust them. And that's for me is important, that I can trust people that that I know will work really hard and will we'll try everything that you can to succeed. So I think, I think that's important. Is he someone that challenges your opinions at times? Is he someone that's good to bounce off of? What, what, are you, what are you like as a duo? What, how do you operate? Yeah, but he'll lose. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll lose. Uh, no, we, 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 as a staff, we, we discuss everything. Like, we all do. In the, and everybody will have their, their stake in it to see what, what they, what they want to say. And then ultimately, I've just got to, it's okay, we go this way. This is what we're doing. And then everybody accepts it. And then that's. Uh, I was never ever, we didn't, I never blame anybody mm. and, uh, or, or nothing, nothing we try and do what we think is best for the football club and for the team and then I'll never, um, the last can probably have opinions of what they want to think and then I'll just say okay we, we, go, we go this way. The, the true work is done in the build up to a game, it's done here on the training yeah. pitch isn't it, by yeah. the time you get to three o'clock. The, the work should be done by then, I guess, as a manager, isn't it? Oh, there's, there's nothing you can... The lads know everything that, that goes on, they know everything that's, uh, that you want to try and achieve, and match day, really, it's, it's not... It's, it's just basically being ready for the game. It's, uh, sometimes you keep on speaking and speaking and speaking, it's, it's in one ear and out the other all the time, and it's uh, no good in like, certain aspects. So Saturday's, Saturday's probably... Easy up until three, and then it becomes difficult. Um, Anthony Pilkington at Wigan is someone that you um, mm. that you came very close to signing. I think there was, you know, complications mm. in terms of things going on with him personally behind the scenes. It wasn't just as simple as missing out on a player, was there, at the time with with Anthony for financial reasons or whatever? No, Pilks I know really well, and uh, we tried to see if he would, he would come in, and uh, I think he wanted to go nearer home. I think he's from that neck of the woods, and you have to respect what what he wants to do. And um, yeah, so that's basically how it how it um, kind of transpired. But I don't have any any um, ill feeling against it. That's what happened. And it was a, it was a scrappy victory. A win's a win. You kind of use mm. that phrase against them there. As much as you're trying to play mm. good football at the moment, would you would you be more than happy for your team to go to war and? Scrap yeah. out a win that way on Saturday. Uh, you, ha you have to, I think you have to do, do that. You have to fight for everything that, that's coming. I think the, if you can do it by playing great, great. If you don't and you, and you get a win, nobody's really going to matter. It's, uh, or we just have to try and get that, that win. We've been talking about Cole Scoots and Luke Chambers mm. and they're paramount to the future of this football club. Mm -hmm. Luke's contract is, mm -hmm. is up. There's the option there of discussion started on that. Mm -hmm. What's the situation? No, we've, we've spoke about it, and uh, I think Marcus is going to speak to Luke as well, so it's, which is good. I think that's that's important. Luke, know, I think Luke knows everything that's going on. I know most of the things that's going on. Marcus knows, Lee knows, everybody knows what's, what's going on. So I think Marcus and it will will speak to him. I know they've had discussions of what's uh, what's uh, going on moving forward, so which is which is good. Because he said he wants to be here mm. if this club is to go down. Mm. He wants to be here and be the captain mm. to try and lead Ipswich Town back. From your point of view, it sounds like you you want him to be here as well. That his experience is going to be key. That was vital, absolutely. You've got to have that experience as well around the, around the club. Go back to the two lads that that, uh, that Brennan mentioned. They, they've been great. I said I can't think of two more lads, good lads to have around the place to help. Help the younger ones. They'll be 33, I think, both of them at the start of next season. Mm. But you've got to have that mix. I, I know people have enjoyed the youthfulness and the vibrancy of the last two performances, mm. but to suddenly 
say that you don't need any experience? No, no, no. It's just it's impossible. It's uh, you, you need everybody, not just whether there's youth there or not, and uh, you need that little common head at certain times. Whether the lads start games or whether they're on bench or whether they're round about the place, it's 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 paramount. Mm. Young players might think they know everything that goes on in the game, and you tend to find there's a little bit more to it than just playing football at times. You have to learn how to live right and do the right things and keep your feet in the ground. And they lads have had unbelievable careers. So that's why I say there's no better role models than them to, to look at, you know. My thing is that uh, the time at 33, nobody knows how they, how long the lads can go, but you'll never beat time. It always catches you. It doesn't matter who. It doesn't matter you. It's going to get you. You'll chuck it one day and you'll, uh, you'll be like Mel and you think, he's, he's 94. So, so, and then you're like, what am I going to do? So uh, that, that's the, the difficult as you get older. It's, it's, it's a big, when your career comes to an end, you know it's coming to an end or it's, it's a few years down the line, you think, what am I going to do next? Do I go into management or do I go into youths or do I go into ambassador role or, or things like that? But the, the club has got two great guys there, I think it's, it's important. Do you remember, you, you obviously made your debut at a very young age, mm. you came through at a young age, the, how important those type of players were to you at the start of oh, your career? Listen, I, I played with guys that were unbelievable, unbelievably hard, battle hardened, incredible things I saw in dressing rooms that were, were, were unbelievable for a young player to see. But what I did, they made me unbelievably hard and really strong in the head. And uh, thankfully, I did play with these guys. Brian Gallagher, Jimmy Rooney, Billy Abercrombie, Tony Fitzpatrick, my God. Uh, Frank McIverney was there. Frank was just leaving for West Ham. Jim Stewart, Campbell Money, Neil Cooper, really hard and guys. That, uh, they were really good players. And I also know if I messed around, I was getting one, you know. I was getting a backhander, so uh, I didn't take that. So, uh, but i tell you what, I wouldn't have changed it for the world. I wouldn't have changed it. I, I used to, their boots had to be spotless. The dressing had to be spotless. Unbelievable jobs we had today. But what an upbringing it was. It gave me great discipline, which was great. And uh, great respect for, for the older players. And, uh, yeah, thankfully, I'm, I'm so glad that that was a group of players I got brought away, you know, and they're a big part of my career. Yeah. And on the flip side, at the end of your career, you're trying to squeeze every last drop out of it at that point. Does it mean that much more to you that, you know, every game is getting towards your last game at that point? Well, I knew I was going to retire. I had a little problem with my ankle and uh, one or two guys kind of went by me. I thought we wouldn't have done it a year ago and I knew then it was, it was time to go. The big thing you've got is you have to make that decision. If it's okay, that's enough. Or I can keep going. And uh, at 35, I thought that's enough. Yeah. I had a great career, great playing career, great times, great success. One of the biggest things in, in Europe. I couldn't ask any more of, of myself, really. So, uh, but I think that all stemmed from my, my upbringing. But when your career's come to the end, then you have to think, well, what do you do? Do you get into, yeah. as you said, management, coaching, or, or television, or journalism, or whatever? It's, it's difficult for a player, really, really difficult. Cole and Luke seem to be, they're players that have had very few injuries between mm. the two of them. They've been very durable players. They should yeah. be, on their records, players that could go for at least another year, if not more, yeah, you would think. Oh, easily. I, I, I think absolutely, they, they, they could go on for another few years. 100% they could, they're, they're guys, I think, the way they live. That's why I think they're great role models. I think the way they live, the way they conduct themselves, they train every day. They very rarely miss miss training unless it's something illness or, or severe. They're really fit guys. They they could play for a hell of a lot a few years, but the end is a lot shorter now than what they did start when they were 19 or 18 or 17. Whatever age you were, that I said you can never beat time. Time always it always catches you. Good luck, sir. All right, thanks. Um, Emir Hughes and Tom Aliani, any progress with those two? They're doing okay. It's still, uh, still way off. Still way. Um, I think they're in a better place. I think, and uh, but it's still, it's, uh, it's frustrating as anything. I think for the guys, uh, look, forget anything else. I think just for them too, it's it's frustrating for for them too. 
know what he won the grass or anything, or not even training with us at all. Like, Emma's, Tom done a little bit of a run. Emir's done a little bit with the physical and things like that. So, but it's, it's still, it's still a long way away. I don't know. I, I I I really don't know. Sometimes I think the lads are getting back, and then all of a sudden it, it breaks down, and and uh, you can't put pressure on them. But hopefully they're going to be okay. You mentioned um, one or two young centre halves. Chris Smith, where's he at the moment? In the building. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. There's, I think there's decisions on kids getting made, and they. Uh, the club are looking at different things at the minute. I think we have to look at lads that we think are, are, are contracts are coming really close to the end and things that are guys that we think are not going to do it or I think that's ongoing at the minute. But um, yeah, so discussions on, on every young player's ongoing. Tracks only went out on trial to Wigan, didn't they? Kyle McKendry and uh, mm. I can't think of who it was. Um, uh, Daniel Webber. Pat? Pat Webber. Yeah. Yeah, it must be some age. <laughs> uh, it, you get development lad, lads. You don't know who's going to develop quicker, you don't know who's going to develop slower. You, you just have to make a real judgment of who you think is going to make an impact in your, in your squad or in your or who can push the older ones uh, every time. An older player or an experienced player has to have somebody looking, you have to have look over your shoulder to what's coming. Whether it's a, a guy coming into a club or a young player coming through, you think this guy can be really good. As I said before, we can't block the path for a young player. So the one, I think the supporters will take to it because it will identify as their own. And uh, I mean, you heard the reception Bishop got the other day. It was Flint's are the same, Dizel's the same, Lancaster's the same, Kenlock. They're all the same. They've all been brought up with it. So it's a great thing to have with it. But the club has got to have a pathway for for young guys coming through. The development of different players are, are going to go quicker and are going to go slower. That's, that, that's been, you have to call it the way you see it at that moment. Do you think they can make it or do you think they can't? And Aaron Dryden, you sent him out on loan yeah. to um, Waterford and Ireland. Is yeah. that for his development as well? Yeah, there, there is that, yeah. I know Ben Morris is obviously in Flamia are injured, which is, which is a little blow eh, with the two kids. But uh, yeah, basically that's what it's, that's what it's down to. Have you sort of told him to go out and score as many goals as he can to sort of impress you? There, there is, but it's not, it's not just about the goal scoring, it's how there are as, as kids as well. Aaron's a really good kid, really nice kid. That's one thing, the kids here are really nice, really, really nice guys. Never really any any issues with them at all, but football is a game where some people can overtake you really quick if you become static. Football doesn't wait for you. Football owes you nothing. It owes you absolutely nothing, football. It's a great game, but it owes you nothing. You have to earn the right to get it, and you have to be hungry to get it. Aaron definitely needs to go out and play. But there's no point in just staying here and training. It doesn't doesn't help anybody. Okay. All right. All right. All right.